Let's talk Tanya for the 21st day of the first other. Today we're going to conclude chapter 30 of Tanya. We've been doing this chapter for a while, for six days. Let's reset. Where are we? The larger topic is Mivachanle, um, the crushing of the ego. Why are we crushing the ego? We're talking about a person who's suffering from Timtum Halev, which is emotional unresponsiveness, um, numbness, apathy, inability to generate positive emotions and passion for things that are holy. So the Alter Rebbe for that prescribes Mivachanle, um, the crushing of the ego. And we did a whole chapter on that in chapter 29, talking about our lowliness, contemplating that. And then in chapter 30, we're talking about, okay, so you might think that you're a lowly person, but everyone else around you is also lowly. In fact, there are a lot of people who are lowlier than you. So here we introduce the idea of heavy shval ruach b'fnei kol adam, which means we're supposed to be humble before every person, which means we're supposed to view ourselves as lower than every person. We're supposed to look up at every other person. But how am I supposed to look up at every person, honestly, if there are people out there who are terrible people, lowly people? So the answer to that is a two-step process. The first step that we, we is what we did over the last uh, five days or so, which is understanding that I cannot condescend anyone because I can't judge another person unless I'm, I'm in their circumstances. So therefore, I can't look down at anyone. But that doesn't help me understand how I'm supposed to look up at everyone. Why am I inferior to everyone else around me? And that's what we're going to be talking about in today's Tanya. In today's Tanya, the Altar Rebbe is going to say, okay, so you're not doing so great in your struggles. And then there's someone else who you see possibly have a low life, and they're not doing so well in their struggles. They're failing in their struggles. You know who's more responsible? You know who God holds more culpable? The answer is you. Why? God has higher expectations of you. Why? Because you're learning Tanya. In the words of the Alter Rebbe, if you're a person who seeks a relationship with God, and you are a Yudea Sefer, you're a relatively scholarly person, at least relative to that other person who you're looking down at. So then, your higher spiritual stature comes with higher expectations. So if you're failing in your struggles, and that person is failing in their struggles, actually, you're in a worse off place. And you can be shfal ruach, you can actually be humble before that person. The example that Rebbe gives, the Gemara tells us, the Talmud tells us, interestingly, says that Torah scholars, when they sin, by mistake, inadvertently, so God considers it as if they sinned intentionally. Why? You're a Torah scholar. You should know better. You should understand better. You should have a, um, a heightened sensitivity and be careful not even to mess up by mistake. On the other hand, the Talmud says, the people who are ignorant people, the sins that they do on purpose, intentionally, God considers it as if they did it inadvertently. Why? Because what do you expect from them? Even if they did it intentionally, do they really understand, do they really appreciate what they did, with that, how what they did was wrong? So therefore, that, here's the interesting thing. You're going to say, oh, that low life, I'm going to look down on them. It works the opposite way around. If they're really a low life, then you have no right to look down on them. You have to look at yourself and you say, one second, God has higher expectations of me. And if I am not struggling, and if I'm not winning in my struggles, I'm actually lower than that person. Okay. With this, we finished chapter 30, and we are crushed. Our egos are crushed. In chapter 29, we learned how just how lowly we are. And now, now here in chapter 30, we're finding out, not only am I individually lowly, but I'm actually lowlier than anyone else around me. Ultimately, we need to reach from here to a place of joy. But I'm so crushed, how am I supposed to be happy? How do I pick up the pieces from here and enter a state of simcha, a state of happiness? That will be the topic of tomorrow's Tanya and of the next chapter of Tanya, chapter 31.